All right, we're going to start off with Genesis chapter 1, please. I am going to divide this into separate clips for people online because there, it is consisting of different topics, but it is consisting of one topic. So we're, I'll probably title this as a long video as Intermediate Powers Between the Physical and Spiritual Worlds. So in my other video clips, you probably saw where I talked about the darkness, the frozen deeps, uh, that there's something to it, as well as concerning absolute zero. So we're going to cover more of that over here. Let's start off with Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. It all begins, right? Everything begins somewhere. So in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So we see right here heaven and earth. Now the Bible also says, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, over here, you notice that it says, in the beginning, the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So, in the beginning, He already completed it. He completed His creation of heaven and earth. So, it's already set. It's already done. But then in verse 2, all of a sudden, you see waters. Now that's strange. Why is it that after he created everything and then all of a sudden there's waters all over? But not only that, it says darkness was upon the face of the deep. So there's darkness as well. Now why is that? The reason why is because of God's judgment concerning Lucifer and the sons of God. Now I'm not going to go over there for time's sake, but... Uh, I would encourage people to watch my other video called The Gap Theory. Just watch that one. And I show you convincingly in every detail and step that there was something that happened before Adam's world. Before Adam's world, Lucifer and the sons of God used to live on the earth. And they ruled over creation. But what God did was, is that because Lucifer sinned against God in his pride, that's the reason why the Lord, he drowned them all out. And that's why he set forth darkness as well. Why would he set forth darkness? Because the Bible says at the book of 1 Peter, as well as the book of Jude, that he reserved the angels unto darkness forever with his chains of judgment. So that's where we can see where the darkness came from. So God judged everything with darkness and water. Now, how did we come into this picture today? How is it that mankind can have interaction with the spirit world and scientists are able to accomplish certain scientific experiments and make certain accomplishments where it enters almost to the borders of the spiritual realm? How did this all happen? Let's start off at the beginning. So this is why we're going to look at these intermediate powers. From these intermediate powers, we can see how we can enter the spiritual realm. The first thing God did, verse 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light that it was good, and God, now, there was light too, okay, but now there's light, that uh, God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day, okay, now, remember this, in this passage, he created light, so now we see another element here, remember, there's earth, there's heaven, there's waters, darkness, and light. Now, the verse specifically said he divided light from darkness. Now, as Bible-believing Christians, we believe every word in the Bible, and we read it exactly as it says. That's what we do. So he literally divided it. But now the question is, okay, how did he divide it? Where is the light? How did he divide light from darkness? Well, let's keep reading here. Then we're going to understand. Verse 6. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Okay, now God has to add a firmament here. Now remember, there's waters all over, correct? Now, uh, look, remember verse 2, darkness was upon the face of the what? Deep. Now there's a connection here with darkness and the deep here. Now just keep that in mind. Okay, we'll return to that later on. There's a connection right here. Mm. But uh, just keep that in mind. God made the firmament, verse 7, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters 
which were above the firmament, and it was so. Okay, now the point is he divided these waters, one on top, one on the bottom. So what happened right here? Hmm. Well, what did he do? Let's erase a little bit right here of these waters, and then let's divide this thing now. So then, what he did with the waters now is that he had to put a firmament in between. And then this firmament divided the waters which were above from the waters which were below. So now we got waters over here. And then you got waters also underneath here. Now, I would encourage you to uh, watch my other video about deeps in outer space. If you watch that one, I explain much more in detail about how this works. This one, I'm just going to go through it very briefly and quickly so that I can jump to the more important areas, which is the intermediate powers. So waters which are below. Now, how is this divided as? Well, if you keep reading at the book of Genesis chapter 1, the waters below are the waters in our earth today. And then the waters above is referring to the sea of glass that is the floor of heaven. You might say, how do you know that, Pastor? Because if you read the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 4, as well as Revelation chapter 14, I'm doing this from memory, the verse says that God's throne was on a sea of glass. That's why it makes sense waters above, waters below. Why? Because there's a firmament in between. And what is this firmament? That's that universe that has all the stars and the sun and moon. You might say, okay, you're jumping so much, Pastor, one at a time. Let's do this. So let's look at now at verse 9. And God said, let the waters, what? Under the heaven. Remember? See? Waters above, waters under. So it's talking about these waters. Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. See, I told you so. That's where the waters below is. So the waters below is here on our earth today. Whereas, how do we know this is referring to the universe where the sun, moon, and the stars are at? So let's, put, let's look at day number four. Let's jump ahead right here. We're going to look at verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in where? The firmament of the heaven to divide. Told you so. So now you got the sun over here. And then you also got the moon and the stars. So this is the firmament, there's no doubt. Now, let's take things one at a time now. <laughs> this is interesting, isn't it? So if this is the firmament, this is the waters below, and the waters above, there's no doubt, it had to be up to here, because the firmament is in between waters. We already learned that. It has to be. So this seems right. Why is this right? Because the Bible mentioned that the floor of heaven is a sea of glass. I already mentioned that to you. So we already see that. Now, as we add this together, remember God divided the light from the darkness. Ah, now we know where that darkness is. It's what? Here. That's why in the universe it's dark. You might say, why is that? How do you know that? Because why did, why did he say at verse 14 he has to put lights in there? That's where the darkness is. Oh, but what about the light? He said he divided the light from the darkness. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. When God created the world and God created the whole universe, what did the Bible say? God is light and in him is no darkness. And he created the universe too. Notice the context of the light is in the context of him creating the universe. Look at John chapter 1 and verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Right? So this is the context of the beginning of creation. He created everything. But look at this. Why is it all of a sudden it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Verse 7 
The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. Uh, verse 9, that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Wow. See, Scripture with Scripture shows you everything. That's who the light is. The light is God. Now, if you don't think so, then why did God have to put lights here? Where do we get our lights from in our earth today? How do we get the lights? Unless, that's why God had to create the sun and the stars and all that. Now, this is very interesting. Now that we got all this here, go jump to Revelation again. So let's talk about that sea of glass, shall we? Now let's talk about how this intermediates between the physical and spiritual world. And then keep your hand at Genesis chapter 1 as well. Genesis chapter 1. Because we're going to be going through scripture with scripture. And it's going to be very interesting what the Lord shows. Okay, so we're going to look at Revelation chapter 15. It'll be chapter 15. And then we'll look at verse 2. Chapter 15, verse 2. Okay, so like I told you folks, I'm doing this all, all of this purely from memory. So just uh, kind of put up with me if I jump around places, okay? Revelation 15, verse 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with what? Fire. And then that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image. So notice right here that there's a sea of glass mingled with fire at the floor of heaven. Ah, then we've got fire here as well. So there's fire over here as well. Now think about this. Genesis chapter 1. What did God say about his creation right here? He mentioned right here that in verse 14 of Genesis chapter 1, God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for what signs and for seasons and for days and years so there's something to it here this is supposed to be a sign of something these are supposed to be a sign of something look at jump to Colossians Colossians chapter 1 Colossians 1 this is going to be a fun night we're going to look at all the scriptures right here and then we'll see what the Bible says Look at the book of Colossians, chapter 1, and then we'll look at verse 16. Verse 16. You got to understand this. Creation is supposed to represent God. Yes. Creation is supposed to represent God's work. These are for signs, remember? Colossians, chapter 1, and verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. Visible and what? Invisible. See, everything of the physical realm, all of the physical universe. So here's the physical realm. As well as the spiritual realm, all of it was created by him and for him. This is supposed to represent something here. Uh, let's see right here. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principality or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things uh, consist. And then what you're going to find out is that if you jump to, we're not going to go over there, but do you ever remember reading Romans 1? If you want to jump ahead, you can go over there, but I'm not going to turn there. If you jump ahead at Romans 1, what did the Bible say? His creation is supposed to be evidence of them so that they are without excuse. They are without excuse at Romans chapter 1. So we see in Colossians chapter 1, as well as Romans chapter 1, that creation is supposed to represent God. Okay. So you got to understand this. When God creates all these things, he's not just doing it randomly like this. I'm just going to create a son. Why, God? Oh, I'm just going to do it. No. He has a reason for everything. Yeah. Now, if you've been saved for a while and you've seen God work in your life, you know God does things for a reason. He just doesn't just put things out randomly. Oh, it's just because I want to. 
That would be so lame that if sin entered into our world, we go through pain and suffering. Why are we going through this, God? Oh, just because I want to? <laughs> no, that'd be horrible. He has a plan and purpose for it. So he did all this for a reason. It's supposed to be a sign of something. It's supposed to picture, represent what God's doing, his movement. Okay, so think about this. Then this physical realm is supposed to picture what? Now, let's enter a little bit more right here, shall we? So, God is light. In him is no darkness, yes? Here, here he is, the light. That's why when you go to heaven, it's all what? Light. There is no night there, as the Bible said. It's all light. Okay, let's go through this one by one then, about the intermediate powers. You know what the intermediate powers are? Earth, waters, darkness, and fire. So let's go through all of this one at a time here. So, in darkness, and then also fire and waters. Why is it that there are shamans? And why is it that there are certain uh, witch doctors? and tribal doctors, etc. why is it that in order to enter the spiritual realm, you have to look at the fire? Take a closer look yeah. through the fire. Why is that? Because supposedly when you go through the fire, who are you supposed to contact? You're supposed to contact the spiritual realm. Why is it that they emphasize a lot about darkness too? Shut your eyes and let's meditate and do yoga. Uh, close your eyes when you pray, Christians. We close our eyes. Why, why is it all darkness? Because we, you make it dark to enter some sort of spiritual realm. That's why Christians pray. We close our eyes and pray. We enter a spiritual realm there. That's the reason why uh, occultists, and that's the reason why New Agers and witches, they would make the room dark. They would emphasize darkness sometimes. So that you can, what, enter the spiritual realm after that. So that you can hit a light somewhere, right? You first go through darkness, empty the mind, you go through something there, and then finally you just find some sort of light within that journey. As you close your eyes, as you make everything empty, empty your mind. Make it dark. That's how you contact the spiritual realm. Is through, you have to have darkness to reach the light. That's why they have fire so that you can contact with the light. But here's another thing, what's very interesting, I, get, I gave this in my other video concerning about waters, right? The title of the video is Enter the Deeps and you'll see heaven or hell. How do you go to heaven? You have to go through the waters, right? How do you go to, to hell? Through the waters, right? Where's hell? Hell, that, this is fire. Where's another place of fire? Right below the earth. Right below the earth. That's hell. Is this a spiritual realm? Yes. But it's very close to the physical realm as well. In the core of the earth is what? Lava, magma, etc. The core of the earth is all fire. Think about that. The, you got to understand this, the spiritual realm and the physical universe, this will make a lot of sense. You divide the two. The spiritual is not the same as the physical. But this does not mean that there is, not, there is no intermediate plane. That's going to be very eye-opening. You got to understand this. With the physical and spiritual world, you just don't jump like that. You don't jump from physical to spiritual or spiritual to physical. You just don't jump like that. There's something intermediate in between so that, why? Because the intermediate mediates between the two. Because these two are contradictory things. Galatians chapter 5, what did it say? The flesh contradicts the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary one to the other so that he cannot do the things that he would. Flesh, the flesh, physical realm, and spirit, spiritual realm, they're contradictory. But here's the thing, why is it that a Christian, 
A saved Christian can do things spiritually and can do things physically. Is there an intermediate factor that a saved Christian has where he can do fleshy physical things as well as spiritual things? Can some of you guess what it is? That's why it exists the soul. Oh, now things are making sense why the soul, if you're not saved in Jesus Christ, where you don't have the Holy Spirit, because your spirit is dead, your soul, all it contacts is the physical thing of the flesh, and this flesh sins every day. No wonder your soul is contaminated, and God has to judge it with hell fire. Because to get God is holy, he is light, amen? So this light is holy, it consists of no darkness, right? But to enter through the holiness and that light, you have to go through the fire. These people are lost without hope, without God. They cannot be holy, which is why they are cast into the what? Fire. Right there. The fire is one of the most powerful, uh, one of the most intermediate powers. Fire. Because why? A lost, God cannot have sin at all. He cannot have sin at all within his creation. So how is he going to contain a sin? Fire. Fire is a cleansing factor, see? Fire is a cleansing factor. That's why there are false religions that come up with the teachings such as Catholicism about purgatory where it burns off, cleanses off the sins. That's why God has you burn forever in hell. Why? Because your soul is eternal with sin. And unless you have an eternal payment, unless you have an eternal payment, which is the blood of Jesus Christ, and if you don't have the eternal blood, then you're going through eternal fire. Isn't that what the Bible says at Matthew chapter 3? John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you two things, Holy Ghost and fire. Why did he say that? Because the Holy Spirit cleanses you, whereas the fire, it is a cleansing factor as well. And that fire is hell. If you continue reading Matthew 3, John the Baptist said, whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge, see clean, purge his floor with unquenchable fire. How about that, folks? See, this, these are powerful factors right here. Does it make sense now why when you think about certain religions, oh, these guys are pagans. They don't know what they're talking about, these uh, witch doctors, these shamans and stuff like that. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Even secular scholars who study physical anthropology as well as cultural anthropology, when they go through some of these things that these shamans and witch doctors do, they can't figure out how they did it, despite of all their scientific experiments. They can't understand that. Uh, here's something uh, recent that I just learned concerning psychology. Psychology, I'm going to do a video on that one day, but I'll just say this real briefly, okay? Psychology is the study of the soul. Yeah. That's what it means. Psych came from Greek, which is meaning soul, study of the soul. Psychology is the study of the soul, which is the mind. That's why psychologists... You know, to them, soul is just a term. But more accurately, what they're studying is mind. That's what they're saying. Mind is a real you. Soul is a real you. That's why we believe mind is the soul. That's what we Christian Bible believers believe in. Now, anyway, this is the study of the mind, uh, study of the soul. That's what psychology teaches concerning here. Now, concerning uh, the soul issue, when it is contaminated by sin then obviously you burn in hell fire forever. But there's a thing within psychology, because remember, the soul is an intermediate force with the physical realm, with your body, right? There's a thing that they could not understand, psychologists cannot understand, and it's called the placebo effect. What is this? What this means is that people are healed when you just, uh, when they believe it. When you tell them that, uh, let's say you give them a drug and you trick them, this drug is the most powerful drug. It should cure you, uh, the, your sickness, the pain that you're feeling right now. And they took it and they are actual. I'm not kidding. This is secular scholars here, okay? Secular grad level scholars. They say that there are actual cases where people got healed. They got better. 
until somebody mentioned later on that it was fake, then they got sick again. But that's the reason why Scientology, Scientology right here, what, do, what does Scientology teach? Scientology, they teach that to be well, you, it's all about the mind. Did you ever notice Tom Cruise, the famous actor? He's uh, part of that group, the Scientology group. You ever wonder why he's able to do these crazy stunts, crazy actions? Normally, people would be fearful of those kind of stunts and actions. Why can he do it? Because Scientology, they're all about the mind here. You get well. That only happens when you think it happens. Anyways, as we continue on right here, so that's the strange thing that psychologists can't understand right here. It's the power of the soul right here, the power of the soul. Because we believe there's a difference with body, soul, and spirit, that's why these guys don't understand. You know why? Because they're all bound to the physical universe. They don't recognize there can be an intermediate force with the spiritual realm. We believe in it. We believe not only the physical universe, but there's an intermediate state as well as the spiritual realm. Okay, so you see right here, that's how you enter the spiritual realm. Is through these elements. Through these elements. These are the intermediate powers where you can enter the spiritual realm. Now let's talk about certain powers that are actually very mysterious that people cannot understand today. There are two powers that people and scientists today are still baffled with and they can never understand what it is. You know what they are? So this is very interesting. The first one is light. Scientists still today cannot understand light, how it works. Even the great Albert Einstein, who's considered one of the uh, smartest intellectuals, when he gave his theory of relativity, that the speed of light is constant. That's how they can discover more scientific facts in their universe, they will say. Secular scientists claim they can uh, measure, they can discover more things about the workings of the universe through the speed of light. So there are, one force is light. They cannot understand that. And if you believe in that book, then you understand why. The Bible says, God is light, and in him is no darkness. You know why you can't understand that? Because you can't understand God completely. What's the second power that people still have trouble understanding. You ready for this? It is gravity, scientists call it. Secular scientists call this gravity. Now there are people out there who've done um, more research and they don't believe in gravity, whereas the secular science, science world, they still retain this idea of gravity. But concerning gravity, let's get back to the point right here. Gravity, they, a lot of scientists are still baffled about how gravity works. All they can do is see the outward workings and then give it that name gravity. That's all they can do. But gravity is a, another mysterious factor and power that they can't understand. Go to Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. Do you know why? I'll tell you why. And then go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. <laughs> you know why it's a mystery? Because Satan, that's him. He's the force. There is some kind of force that is out there, but it's still a mystery. And they cannot completely understand its workings. God is light, and Satan, you must understand, is the force. Look at Daniel. Chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. And then we will read verse 38. But in his estate shall he honor the who? God of forces. And a God whom his fathers knew not. Uh, shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God. See, this is a foreign, this is not the true God of the Bible. This is an evil God. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, Ephesians 2, 2. It's out there. This force is out there within our earth, within our world and the universe, but it can't be explained. Wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the who, 
power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Scientists realize this. There are now waters is right here, earth is that right here, fire is up there. But if you want two specific powers that is all over the universe, you ready for this? What are two powers you can think of that is all around the universe? It's this one and this one. Light and gravity. Why is that? Because there are two powers, folks, that are working throughout all of creation. Both of them want your soul. Both of them know it's not just the physical realm. There's something out there. Woo! <laughs> Ain't that something? And here's another thing right here. Concerning uh, gravity, look at our world, how the devil is deceiving the world concerning gravity. For one, you got the New Agers. What did they say? They give the idea about the Force. And now it's spread throughout our popular culture in Star Wars. May the Force be with you. I'm going to tell you something, folks. That is not Jesus Christ. That is a demonic spirit spirit right there. Didn't you know that I've actually seen some Christian stores and organizations that give out Christian tracts of Star Wars and they have may the force be with you and they said that force is Jesus Christ. Folks, who's the God of forces? You read it in the Bible. Who is he? That's Satan. That is not Jesus Christ. Another thing right here concerning the force, you notice that when uh, in Star Wars, how they get that power of the force. They move things, see? They're able to move objects. That's the force in them. That's all demonic. That's why there are some occultic practices where they do what? Strange levitation. That's occultic. That's of the devil. Uh, let's not, let's kind of get off now a little bit from the spiritual realm and let's enter the physical realm. How did the devil use this for the physical realm? Scientists teach we were all created out of what? Gravity. You know what science is now to them? It's a religion. Science now is something, gravity is their God. Gravity is something that they believe created all, created all of us throughout the universe. You want me to go more than that? Here's another thing. Satan is not just gravity. He is also another thing right here. He is what? Darkness. Really, Pastor? Yeah, the Bible says that he is the prince of darkness. Didn't you know that? Yeah. How about that? The Bible mentioned that Satan is the prince of darkness. Scientists, what do they teach? What created us? Dark matter. You see what the devil's doing? See, Satan, what he's doing is that he's entering. He's not just deceiving the spiritual realm, folks. He's deceiving the physical realm. See what Satan's doing? But God, here's one thing, he is light. Ah, let's get, now this is something even better. You ready for this? You think these two were something? I'm going to show you something better than that. God is light, but look at John 1 again. He is also what? There's one power you never thought of. It's word. You know why? Word is something that carries the idea and a belief. Word can change people's souls. Didn't you know that? If you don't believe me, don't underestimate the power of words with Adolf Hitler. He damned a lot of souls in the end after that. Don't deceive the power of science. Even science couldn't be, science would not be able to teach you without words. They have to write the words down to communicate to you, to give you the belief and the idea. God can't minister to save Christians without his what? <laughs> Look at John 1. John 1. His word. It has power. You think you're going to carry this more carefully now after this? After church is over, you're going to carry this more carefully now? You're going to probably cherish this more carefully now? This is a power. John 1.1. 1, 1. We read that before, Pastor. You just didn't read it hard enough. All right? Let's read it. In the beginning was the who. Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was what? God. God is not just light. He is the what as well. He is Word. Because we believe what created everything. If God is light, that's how He created everything, right? Through the light of His power. 
But also, how did he create all of us? Through his what? Aha. Let there be light. And there was light. Oh, wow. That's bad. How did you get, how did your spiritual realm get alive in? You were dead in trespasses and sins, but you became alive, revived, created anew, born again by what? The word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing. You are saved by faith and hearing by the what? Word of God. Woo! Glory to God. How about that? How about that? See, this is something here. The, now, in the Bible, I'm going to say this. So I'll probably be the first person to say this. I could be wrong. So I'm going to admit this fact. I could be wrong. But this is what I strongly believe. Out of all the powers throughout our universe... We can see Satan and God using these powers here and there. Fire, God can use it. The devil can also use fire as well. He is dragon. He is Leviathan that blows out fire, the Bible says. The Bible says our God is a consuming fire. He can use that. The Bible also mentions that, God, uh, that the waters, the Lord can use it as well. God spoke out of a burning bush. Uh, Satan, he swims in the waters as Leviathan, dragon that is in the sea. Both God and the devil can walk among the earth. Jesus Christ walked on the earth. The devil, as he said at the book of Job, walking to and fro, up and down on the earth. That's what he said. So it can go. But I never saw God, I never saw darkness becoming part of God or force becoming part of God. I never saw that. Neither have I seen Satan being a part of light or a part of the word. But Satan, if he is going to get into the word and light, what is he going to do? He is going to mimic. He wants to be God, right? Thus, he has his own words. His own words. Occults, why is it that they always chant? Because as Several occultists stated, the reason why we chant is because there are powers and words. But whose power of the word trumps above the power of occults? You ever notice who it was? It is the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. It is the word of God. Yeah. So Satan's word is nothing. He just wants to imitate God. Satan, is he light? Or the Bible says he is transformed into an angel of light. That's why the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 12, uh, chapter 13, it said, uh, don't let it, uh, chapter 11, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, the Bible says, don't let it deceive you if the Satan's ministers can transform into ministers of light. Satan transformed into an angel of light. See, he's not the true light. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's good. He's not the true light. He is not the true word. God cannot be a part of this. Neither can Satan ever be a part of that. All he can do is mimic it. But you notice the attempts of Satan trying to mimic it through the efforts of Tesla and Edison. You notice the, how our world went downhill as soon as what? Let's talk about another thing right here. Technology, right? Technology. The Bible says, I beheld Lucifer as what? Lightning from heaven. Electricity. When Thomas Alva Edison and Tesla and then other scientists, they were doing their experiments and their work, they discovered what they called what? Light. Is that true, genuine light though, or is that man-made light? It's man-made light. Man-made light. Satan want, and then, I don't know if you knew this, but Thomas Alva Edison, he was part of the Theosophist uh, Occult Society. Uh, he even had his name written on one of their papers as well. And then Tesla, he had a lot, of, uh, a lot of his experiment and work was connected with a lot of dark elites. I don't know if you knew that. So the thing is right here, this is not a coincidence right here. As soon as Satan discovered his own light... And the Bible says, I beheld Lucifer as, as uh, Satan as lightning from heaven. So Satan is, uh, is connected with electricity. Ephesians 2, did it, what did it say Ephesians 2? Prince of the what? 
power of the air. In the air, what is the power? It is electricity as well as force. There's some kind of magnetism force. So you see, Satan, he has a connection with this. That's why, how was technology born? Technology through the combination of electricity and force. Through the combination of Satan's own kind of light. As well as the force, you create high and mighty technology. What is the God of the secular world today? What is every single person, and I mean saved, lost, every religion, what is everyone using, relying on today? This is the God of this age, everybody. This is it, technology. This was, and that's why Satan, you see a lot of satanic works within technology. What happened with technology? Oh, that's why people are messing up around in the internet. What happened with technology? That's why you're going to have 666 over here one day. What happened with technology? We got spiritually colder. What happened with technology? It created a, a television mindset. And because of that television mindset, it's affecting people's normal everyday life. That's what secular scholars even admit too. There's a problem with watching television. Social media. Why is there conspiracy theories concerning about social media with Facebook and Google, YouTube and all that kind of stuff? Why are there weird stuff coming out? Technology. Technology. It was born from evil. You got to understand. Now, I want you to understand this, okay? This does not mean that, uh, I'm not saying right here that we can't use technology for the glory of God. We can use technology for the glory of God. You can use any element in our world for the glory of God. Didn't you know God even used the darkness for his glory? The Bible, uh, when God approached to Moses on Mount Sinai, there was darkness all around him. But God is not of that darkness. Because when Moses passed through the darkness, his face shone. He entered the light of God. God is light. See? So here, here's something you got to understand. We can use these elements for the glory of God. But what you've got to understand is that predominantly, predominantly what you can see is that there was a lot of evil used within that. There's a lot of evil used within that. This is very interesting. That's why technology, Satan is going to use this to try to battle God. Technology makes everything omnipotent. See, you get more power and more power, develop more stronger nuclear warfare, etc. Technology is omnipresent. You have Google, you have the satellites, you have people recording phone calls. It's everywhere. You can be everywhere. Technology is omniscient because you got Google. Type down a specific information, boom, right there on the spot. Satan will use technology to try to conquer God. Those are the intermediate powers. Never underestimate that. But what you're going to notice right here is that God, when, uh, concerning the power of the air, we see electricity. One factor God uses through the air is wind. Go to John 3. John 3. We see Satan right here, predominantly using electricity, and God predominantly using wind. Wind. Go to John chapter 3. Notice that the Bible says in verse 8, The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the who? Spirit. Spirit is likened to wind. Satan is likened to electricity, whereas God is likened to wind right here. So here's uh, amazing factors concerning the wind. That's why wherever it blows, we go freely. The Holy Spirit is wind. It has power. We go freely by the Spirit, and we move everywhere. But Satan, he tries to deaden it with all this electricity that we feel in our body through technology. It's unhealthy when you're nearby the computer screen a long time. Don't you know that? Why don't you instead be filled with the wind of the Holy Spirit? Why is it when a breath of fresh air goes into you, you feel more rejuvenated in the morning? This deadens you. This one livens you. Now think about this. 
concerning about these factors, concerning about darkness, light, because of light, God's light and God's power, that's why you can enter the spiritual realm. But if there was no power within the spiritual realm and all these elements died out, you know what it's going to retreat back to? When it has no life, we got light, uh, life from the light and life from the wind. But when you completely dead in life, do you know what you retreat back into? Darkness. That's why, what was God's judgment at Genesis 1? To get rid of life there. Darkness. What happens with this universe if uh, it doesn't continue? If the sun doesn't continue, etc. We all retreat to what? Darkness. We all go back into the dark. What happens to your human life if you're no longer living? turns dark for you. But you're able to live every day in your life because you have your own wind in you. You have your own spirit. Every man has his own spirit. But a lot of people, they don't have the Holy Spirit within them, which you need. Let's talk about earth. We're not done yet. So now let's talk about earth here. This is going to be interesting. Concerning the earth right here, we're all flesh, we're all, uh, we're all bound to the earth. Man is made from the earth. Now, I want to, uh, we're not going to turn over there for time's sake, so we'll just skip that. But in the earth, there is a kingdom. And that kingdom is ruled by Satan. How do you know that, Pastor? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, in whom the God of this world. Uh, the Bible says in Luke chapter 4, the kingdoms of this world are mine, says Satan. So the world is ruled by Satan. But here's the thing. Man is created from what? The earth. So was it Lucifer or man who ruled the earth when God, as soon as God created the earth? Who was it that ruled? Man. Adam and Eve. The Adam was created from the dust of the ground earth. And hence the earth was his domain and rule. Not the darkness. It's the earth. Satan, what did, he, what did he see? He did not like that because he used to rule over the earth. Satan, he's into that spiritual realm. This earth does not belong to him. So what did Satan do? Satan, he had to tempt man, get him out of the picture. And did man fall? Yes. So Satan took over the earth as a result. But this is very important to understand now. The concentration of man is what? Earth. Man is focused on earth. This is not spirit. This is human. This is man. This is not spiritual. Again, let me repeat that. This is not spiritual. This is human. This is physical. When God started his nation of Israel, remember, man's spirit died. But in Christ, we all became alive, right? So the Holy Spirit realm cannot live in mankind for about 4,000 years. So without the spiritual realm, then how can God deal with man? Man is created from what? Earth. So God has to deal with them physically. The, hence, thus we believe in dispensationalism. And before the Christian church age, how did God deal with mankind from the past dispensations? Physically, because man is of the earth. So when he started his own, uh, let's, so Adam and Eve, but they messed up. So then God started with Noah. Okay, let's start a fresh new kingdom. What happened? Messed up, Tower of Babel. Then God says, let's start a group of people to start this kingdom. Jews. So if God's going to use mankind, Physically, not spiritually, because the spirit is dead. Then what he's going to have to do is he's going to use man physically and start his own physical kingdom. That's the nation of Israel. You know what God said to Abraham? I'm going to make your population, this, your seed, numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the sea. Sand on the sea is referring to up there in the universe or down below on the earth. Earth. Those are the Jews. Oh, that's good. I never knew. 
stars of heaven. Is that the Jews? No. Those are Christians. Wait, pastor, why? why? God is what? <laughs> God created what in the firmament? Lights. The book of Job, the morning stars and sons of God. John chapter 1, you believe on the Son of God, you're what? Son of God. 1 Corinthians 15, what does it say? Every man has his own light that shines. What did Jesus Christ say to you? Let your light so shine before men. Man, that's good. That's why I have to keep continuing, okay? Otherwise, I'm going to ruin it, okay? We're going to get out of here a little late, okay? So I'm going to have to apologize to the owners. But anyway, right here, so Israel is bound to the human realm. Now, this is why this is very important for you to understand. If that's the case, Christians... Yeah, I'm just running out of room everywhere, okay? So Christians, we are dealt differently, aren't we? What is our kingdom? Is it physical or spiritual? Spiritual. What is our element then? Earth or is it light? It's light. <laughs> it is light. So this is something important to understand then. Since our kingdom is spiritual, their kingdom is physical. That's why dispensationalism demands a difference of kingdoms. Kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God. God is a spirit. That's why we're kingdom of God, spiritual. Well, the Jews... Their kingdom of heaven on earth. Why did he call it heaven, pastor? Because why? It belongs to heaven itself. He wants them to understand that fact. Okay, but anyway, let's continue on right here. So that's why the nation of Israel today, when God dealt with them physically throughout the Old Testament, he dealt with them physically. He did it through what they see and what they feel. He created laws on the earth, the Old Testament. That's why he did signs, wonders, visions, healings. Why? Physically. Dealing with man. But he did not do that with saved Christians. He deals with them by two powerful things. That's why this is very important. That's, why do people retreat to being a Jew? I want the physical riches that a Jew has. I want to go by the law of Moses, the physical law. I want to have the signs, wonders, and healings. No, there are two powerful elements, powers, did you forget, what are the two intermediate powers that you want to be a part of in this study? <laughs> Do you know what Christians live by today? These two things. Why? Because we walk by faith, not by sight. The physical realm is gone. We're going by faith. And faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the what? What did Jesus Christ say to save people? Let your what? Light so shine before men. We're supposed to, so the two most powerful things, you ready? This is what we're going to almost close right here. Then I got a little closing and another closing, okay? You know what? The two most powerful things that a Christian has today, if, what did Jesus Christ mean by the light in you? Your testimony. Jesus Christ in you. That's the most powerful, that's the most powerful element you have that even affects the laws of physics. The second thing is the Word of God. The more time you spend in that Word, you do something to, this, to the physical realm around you as well. These two things. Two most powerful things. Why do people want to de-emphasize that and become a Jew? That's why what does Satan do? He wants to make Christians become like Jews. He wants them to retreat to the physical earthly thing and, and escape the two most powerful elements. Oh, I want to believe in healings, tongues, visions, what I see, what I feel. Go back to the law of Moses, etc., etc. I believe in physical riches. No, no. That's all Israel. And God switched from Israel to the Christian church. God's dealing with Israel separate from you. He has his own dealing with Israel. Concerning, concerning right here, the Jews, that's why it makes sense. If Satan wants to conquer the earth, God had his own people, Israel, which is a physical kingdom, to battle against Satan's physical kingdom on the earth. Remember, Satan took over. But God set up a kingdom to conquer this one. 
Hence, Joshua, Moses, David, etc. Solomon and all these people built up their own human kingdom on the earth to battle against Satan's physical kingdom. But in the end, Israel just fell into bondage. God gave them up. And then, hence came Jesus Christ to give these two powers instead after that. But God's promise to Israel was this. I will bless them that bless thee, curse them that curse thee. I will make you physically rich. That's why in the Bible, when it talks about physical riches when they serve God, it's all Jewish. That's why, who's the ones who are successful in the scientific field? What? Jews. You'll see a lot of Jews who discovered a lot of things in the scientific field relating to the physical universe. That's why in the conspiracy theory realm, who are one of the top elites? Jews. Hence Rothschilds and then the things going on at the elites, the bankers, and etc. Let's bring up another one right here. How did we all become so worldly minded of this earth? So worldly minded. Because of Hollywood. Who are most of the directors in Hollywood and producers? Jews. Satan corrupted the Jews so that he can keep his little dominion going. So what, does, what is God going to do? Now we close, all right? You ready for this? Okay, so let's wrap this up quickly. What is God going to do to retaliate against all this? You know how God's going to do to retaliate against all this? <laughs> I'm excited about this. He's first going to start with the Christian. With the Christian, he gave them light and the word. That's how we conquer against the devil's system. That's why you Christians better get back to that and not try to... Why does everybody want to be a Jew? Why do religions want to be a Jew? Why is it that... Why did, stop that, man. Go back to here. That's how you fight against the devil's system. So that's how God starts. And then when the rapture sounds and then we go up to heaven, God just slaps the devil right on the face where gravity held... or So-called gravity held us down all this time and God says, you're going up. Hey, praise God. You're going up. Not only that, Satan fell lightning from heaven, right? The Bible says the coming of the Son of Man is like lightning. So he just slaps the devil again after that. The Bible also says that when we get raptured, we have to go through heaven, right? Yeah. So here we go. We're out through this darkness. So we're like saying bye-bye darkness. We're just slapping the devil again. The darkness can't keep us back. The waters can't keep us back. And Leviathan is swimming right there. The fire can't keep us back. Why? We're safe from hell fire. <laughs> and we enter the light and we say, yeah, 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 to the devil after that. We conquered all the elements. So Satan, he's got, he's got this. And what happens? Revelation 12, God kicks him out of the darkness. And uh, Michael and the angels, they kick the devil out. And so he lands on the earth. All he's got is this earth. So he builds up. That's why he's preparing, see, this New World Order stuff, everything that's going on. He's preparing all this with technology, with how he's using the Jews, with how he's using the scientists and the psychologists and the New Agers and all that because they all hold to the intermediate powers. And Satan, all he's got is those things. And through these things, he's building it up. And then one last stand against God. And you know what God does? He already took care of his people, the Christians. Now he's going to go back to who? Israel. With Israel, he rescues them at the end at Armageddon. And you got 144,000 Jews at Revelation chapter 7. And he, the Bible says the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord. He takes back the earth from Satan. And all Satan got at the end is one element. You know what one element Satan got at the end? He goes down to the lake of fire. That cleansing, that purging outside. Thus... There is no more sin in God's creation because he's at that purging right there. Isn't the Bible awesome? Out of all the wrong doctrines that's happening in our day and age at the last days of the church as the apocalypse is coming even closer, the point of all this, friend, is that you won't be even able to grow in knowledge of the truth, in Bible-believing truth, until you get saved first. The most important question you have to ask yourself after watching all this is if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to go to heaven? 
perhaps one of these wrong doctrines have affected you and you had the improper way of salvation. As you have seen before, the way to get saved is very simple. It's only simply salvation by grace alone, without works, through the Lord Jesus Christ in this Christian day and age. If you're not sure that you can go to heaven after you die, it's very simple to get saved. First of all, you have to understand that because of sin, God is a holy God, and He cannot even allow 1% of sin into heaven. So He has to judge sin with a burning hell. So it is very important that you got to realize how serious sin is, and you must repent. You might say, well then, I guess I have to clean up all my sins. I guess I have to go to church. I guess I have to get baptized. I have to, I have to be a good person. No, my friend, good works can never save you. Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so that he can pay all the sins for you. You don't have to pay a single sin for yourself. So all you have to do as a repentant sinner is turn to what he did on the cross alone for your salvation. You might say, well, pastor, I do believe only on what Jesus did on the cross to save me. That's great. Then all you have to do is just say that to the Lord. You might say, well, preacher, I haven't prayed much before in my life. I don't know really how to say it to God. Can you help me out? Sure, you can say it this way. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. As I repent, I put my faith that Jesus is God and that he died, buried and resurrected so that his blood can wash away my sins. I put my faith in that alone to save me, not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Congratulations, my friend, if you meant it with all your heart that you put your faith only on what Jesus did on the cross through his blood to save you, then you are saved. It's that simple, my friend. Now, my friend, it is important to grow in Bible-believing truth. You now know the truth. What are you going to do about it? As the apocalypse comes even more closer and Satan's about his, to set up his kingdom even more, there are many souls dying and going to hell, and even many more churches out there who don't know right and wrong doctrine. It is up to you now on what to do. And go to our resources site, www.bbcenglish.org, and click on the resources link over there, and it'll give you everything that you need to grow in grace. The next step of your journey now is up to you. We've done our part giving you this movie. All of it was done for free by the love of the people. God bless you.